Welcome. Welcome everyone to Life on Track, the TV show and the podcast that's all about going back, not going back on track, by going onto the track you were born into this world to be on personally and professionally. And the precipice behind the show is I wrote the book, Work Love, a love story. And it's a, it's about bringing love into the world, specifically the workplace, because during the pandemic, as we know, a lot of people are working from home and feeling displaced and disheveled and disrespected, really. And I thought, what's the creative opportunity here? And that's how the book Work Love came to be. So it came out in 2021, went number one bestseller right away. And I believe that, you know, bringing more love into this world with everything that's going on is super important. So I use the principles in that book. And then I love the book Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill since the 90s. So I, I utilize the principles in that book as well. So we have an amazing guest today. I'm your humble host, Erin Lay. And I can't, get, I can't wait to get right into this. We have Patrick Carney, the artiste. And before I bring you on, Patrick, I want to read your bio so everybody can hear how extraordinary you are. This man is absolutely incredible. Uh, my God, his work. So Patrick Carney, the artiste, is an indomitable spirit who has shared his creative talent with the world in ways that are sometimes beyond measure. No one captures the essence of a woman, the aura of their souls, the contours of their brilliance in the way that this artist can. Patrick Carney captures the legacy that these women leave as footsteps on this earth. While attending the School of Visual Arts in New York City, Patrick Carney had the privilege to study with Chuck Close, Marge Anderson, Robert Israel, Bernie Hogarth, and Milton Glaser, each of these teachers having a profound impact on his life. As a youth, he, he read voraciously, searching for answers, which led to more questions. While pursuing studies at Buffalo State, he worked as a specialist in media at the Communications Center. Later, he was named the art director of the Lafayette Community Center, where he taught art to inner city, inner city children. For a time, he traveled throughout the New York State as an artist in residence at underprivileged high schools as a representative of the Arts Council and volunteered as an art teacher in the state prison system, believing that it was his obligation to give back and pass on his giving talents. Starting in 1964 in New York's West Village, Mr. Carney dedicated his time to drawing and painting the world of rock and roll music, its passion and creativity caught in real time forever. He traveled throughout the United States, attending rock concerts and painted whatever star excited him. And thus his work is a varied series of welcome surprises, hanging out with what he calls the corner of art and soul. The artiste Patrick Carney creates the images of your youth, capturing on canvas the music you grew up with. Quote and unquote, OMG, you can't even imagine. The colors are so brilliant. Expressions are so captivating and the descriptions are so thoughtful expressed. And the people he brings together are a bundle of joy and inspiration rolled into one. You have to experience Patrick's awesomeness live and in person. We'll take your breath away and surround you with love. And that quote is from Vision Uni, an art collector. Not only are Patrick Carney's acrylics and pens and inks purchased by collectors all over the world, his paintings are displayed in the personal collections of such luminaries as Dick Clark, John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Stevie Nicks, Bruce Springsteen, J.T. Souther, Tom Russell, Judy Collins, Al Cooper, Pete Seeger, Sharon Lecter, and Frank Shankwitz, and Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, just to name a few. You are extraordinary. I love you. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, it's an honor and a, and a privilege to have you here. I want to get right into it because you just have so much to say and so much to share with us and so much for the, the listening audience to learn from. So let's speak about the first talking point, point, which is creating through laying the first. Well, before we get into this, how did you get into doing what you're doing and why? It's my first question that I ask every expert for years. Um, actually, uh, um, my mother claimed that I came out of the womb carrying a pencil and uh, i ha i do not remember not drawing um in my life changed uh, the first time i got a box of crayolas and got all the colors and um to get into the rock and roll uh was um my father uh got very sick and and actually died in 1956 and and um the six of us kids age seven through six months were sent off to um neighbors houses to live while my mother was uh we lived up in westchester county in, in an hour from the hospitals in new york city and the first morning i was uh staying on the keeler homestead i heard something i'd never heard before 
and you know I, I my desire was to understand what was I hearing and um, it was folk music it was uh, um, a song called the little little bitty tear let me down and um, in my house they had been playing big band music so I'd never heard folk music so it was uh, you know uh, 1956 and and uh, so I had to go with uh, you know get a transistor radio and then I started to, you know, I heard Elvis and I heard, you know, uh, Buddy Holly and all the different people that came along. And I decided I had to, cap to capture it. It's amazing. And you've done brilliant work ever since your whole life. So let's get into your first talking point. That's a, a it's a beautiful story. And I still, I, rem I remember the smell of the Crayola crayons with the sharpener in the back. <laughs> and you got the 64 pack. I loved it. Um, let's talk about creating through laying the perfect brick. What it, what is very unique about um, humanity is that it's really not the end result that is the secret. It, the secret is the journey. Yes. So I visualize laying a brick wall when I draw. Each line is a brick. And I need to, to create that and lay that brick perfectly in the wall and get that per piece done first before I move to the next brick or the next line. And um, in all honesty, one of the greatest lessons I've ever learned in that process is to simplify. Human beings, for whatever reason, we complicate everything. Yeah. We overthink, overthink over plan, yeah. everything. Okay. So the idea is to make the process simple and to use as few lines as possible. And when you look at my art, the, the acrylics, I typically use no more than three colors. Huh. Now, wow. it doesn't look that way. However, no. I start with one little jar of the lightest color and work out. And all the colors are mixed in one little jar. Really? So when you see the black, which is the final piece that I'm putting on, all the colors that I used is in that black. That's so interesting. And yeah. I love what you're saying because it's really like a metaphor for life. Oh, it is. You yeah. know, um, people used to say, you know, Patrick, you're, you're, you're different. And, and it took a little while to, you know, understand. And then I thought, well, I'll, I've always been. You know, so the idea was for me to accept that magic, that I was different, yeah. and that I'm not meant for everyone to understand or to be around. So the question was always, or the answer was always, I guess, really, is do what I desire to do. And that's okay. So as we talked about in one of our conversations, I created lanes. And so in the art world, I'm in a certain lane that I am, that I've created all these years. Now the lane hasn't maintained the same thing because I would rather blaze a trail yes. than follow a path. And that's, that's where that comes from. How laying, old were you? Laying the brick. Hmm? How old were you when you discovered the truth, you know, that we're not here to please everybody, that you have your God-given gifts, no, you know, you're unlike everybody else. How old were you when you discovered that? Um, probably 12. Wow. Wow. I, you know, I, 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 uh, I had a very, very unique art teacher. Um, well, Let's step back real, you know, just to show you what happened in um, I was in parochial school up until fourth grade. And I was given an assignment with the rest of the class. And and if you could visualize this, third and fourth grade were in the same room with this one teacher. So half the room be taught, taught one to, and the other half would be doing an assignment. And so. The assignment was to um, paint a rose in, in a vase. One rose, one, you know, just a vase. And um, mine exploded. 
all over the paper with all the colors, with everything, you know. And um, the nun, uh, Sister Mary Gregory, um, gave me an F. <laughs> of course she did. Go ahead. <laughs> we love that. And, you know, I, I, I was not going to accept an F. Because I knew that I was experiencing it the way she never could. Mm. She, in my mind, didn't understand the freedom of being a creative soul. And she told me I didn't understand the assignment. And I insisted, you know, basically she didn't understand life. <laughs> and so I was expelled. Uh, <laughs> this is fourth grade. <laughs> so I, I got the best gift I'd ever gotten by right. going to uh, public school. Right, right. And getting a Mrs. Hunterdon. And oh. um, Mrs. Hunterdon took me by my hand to the library and introduced me to the art section of the library. And introduced me to the art teacher, uh, 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 Mr. Watkins graduate of Pratt, and, and he's the one I started to talk about. And uh, Bernie Watkins really, really was a sensitive soul who understood life. And we had these magical discussions, and one of them was about, you know, the magic of, of creativity. I love that story. And you use the word magic a lot, you know. Oh, yeah, it's one of my favorite words. Yes, I know. I know. And now I know where you got it from. Now everybody listening knows where it was derived. But that, first of all, it's absolutely hilarious that you challenged the nun. <laughs> I love it. I went to the old girls Catholic school in Brooklyn until I was 16 and then moved to Garden City, Long Island, went to public. What a big difference. And I had the nuns, too. Yep. Yeah, it was, yep. it was a lot of uh, criticism, my way or the highway, kind of. And you challenged that. Good for you. And the reason why I asked you how old you were when you learned that lesson, because some people go a whole lifetime not realizing how significant they are. You know, they think that they just have to conform to what the outer world wants and what the outer world needs. You know, and I learned it at 25, but you learned it at 12. Yeah, you know, it's amazing that you say that because there there's so many people that you and I have run into in our lives who have no clue how bright their light shines. No clue. Yes, I know. And I believe it is our mission and should be our passion that we help them and encourage them to understand how big a light they actually have. Because yeah. I believe each one of us were put here for a purpose. Yes. And until we, yes. we understand whatever that purpose is, what is the gift that we're supposed to pass on? We're doing a disservice if we're not. I absolutely, and I agree with you a thousand percent. I've been a life coach for the last 30 years because that's what I love to do. I love to help people live their best life, know themselves where they don't have to count on anybody else to build their own happiness. Nobody else can, you know, it comes yeah. from within you. So I love that you just said that. And, and I, I agree. And I believe if more people like you and I step up in the world and, and share love each in our own, our own way, you do it through those beautiful paintings that you do and the drawings that you do, you know, and I do it through the coaching that I do. I think if more people step up, this world would be such a different place. You know, yeah. it would be uh, the, the, the leaders, as we look ahead, you know, in, in the world that we're in. And, and, and the challenges that, that, that are going on around us and all over the world. The leaders in the next century, I believe, are going to be those people that have the ability to empower others to take spiritual and magical action to encourage and to lead. I agree. I agree. And nothing is impossible. Nothing, nothing at all. You and I talked about this before coming live. I was telling you about my Aunt Rita. You know, yep. in the 60s, she became, everybody listening, all the, all the women out there listening, <laughs> she became the first women, woman, one of the first women in, institutional traders on Wall Street at a time when that was just unheard of, you know, but she believed in herself, 
you know, and she's, she's right. I'm riding around with her in limos as a little girl. And it was, it was amazing what she, but people thought she was a celebrity, but she just, she just literally believed in herself. She didn't have any doubt. There was no, there was no self doubt. And, and she credits and I credit a lot of what I've done in my life also with naivete, you know, she didn't have any, you know, a lot of it was naivete, but anyway, and she was one of the first, she was the first woman to step up to Harry's on the square. I was just telling Patrick that before we came on. So I love what you're saying. And I agree with you. The, the, the future leaders are going to have that, um, the spiritual sense and, and a lot of, a lot of magic, a lot of miracles are going to start to happen. Cause I say all the time, miracles are normal. Let's get into the art of the mastermind because that is so key. Well, for those of you that might not know what a mastermind group is, it's, it's generally a, a small group of like-minded individuals who meet regularly to support each other and, and to help each of the members to get to the next level, to the next level, to the next level through what is called the, the hot seat process. And um, my biggest chagrin in the world is that the uh, word mastermind has been diluted over the years and is a lot of what's going on is not based in that hot seat process that Napoleon Hill taught us in Think and Grow Rich. And, you know, I be believe that all of the leaders in this world should belong to some form of mastermind and um, have, in my case, there's 12 in mine, uh, that um, we get to elevate their projects. We get to elevate their challenges. We get to elevate um, their life through through that hot seat process. Because you, you you know, we 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 help with mastery. We we delve into the niche. We leverage. We build the team around them. We um, we tap into synergy and thus. The results come. Yes. And you know, so it's, what it's you, very important. Can you speak into when you first started this in the 70s? You you were the pioneer, really, of the of the mastermind of getting together as groups. And and um, I mean, it's mastermind has been going on since the beginning of time. But you did something very different in the 70s and with amazing people like Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> Can well, you tell it was really, it was really the, it was uh, 1979 actually. So late seventies, the, um, let me tell you, I, you know, coming from New York, coming through, through the education I had, I had never heard of Napoleon Hill. I'd never heard of Think and Grow Rich. You know, us New Yorkers were, we were, you know, how we were. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, um, I was doing Special an art breed. show in, in breed. <laughs> yeah, I was doing an art show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and a gentleman stopped by um, to visit me and just could not believe that I was making a living, a good living, selling portraits of rock and roll stars. He just he just couldn't believe it. And we had about an hour, an hour and a half conversation at my show, and it was a Sunday. He asked me what I was doing tonight, and I said, "Well, I'm actually." closing up my show and, and moving um, from Harrisburg to to Pittsburgh for, to open a show on Wednesday. And um, he said, when's the last time you had a home-cooked meal? And I said, well, it's been a while, a few weeks. And he invited me home. Now, all I knew was his name was Charlie. And I went home with him. I said, okay, cool. And, you know, he wrote out the directions on a napkin and I drove out, you know, to his home. And, and it turned out to be a guy named Charlie Tremendous Jones. You know who he was. Wow. Uh, yeah. You know, um, and all his books have tremendous in it. That's it. Tremendous was a nickname. Books are tremendous. Life is tremendous. You know, all those kind of things. And uh, one of our great friends wrote the last book with him. Greg Reed wrote, uh, co-authored a book with Charlie, the last one that, that he did. And um, after dinner, Charlie took me out to a converted barn. And in this barn, there had to be, if there was one, 20,000 volumes of books. I mean, they were stacked everywhere. There was books everywhere. And Charlie gave me my very first copy of Think and Grow Rich. Aww. And he mentored me through each chapter every week. 
I would call him on a Sunday night after my shows closed and we would, we would spend 45 minutes on the phone and, and um, that was my first introduction to transformation. So when I got back to, to um, Bucks County after that tour, I thought, wow, you know, we got to, you know, chapter on mastermind, let's, let's do something. So we, we started what was called the Monday afternoon tea party and it was for artists only, um, you know, artists, poets, uh, singer songwriters, um, watercolorists, uh, sculptors, all those kind of things. And we called it the Monday afternoon tea party and we critiqued, um, each other's, um, works as they were in in the process as well as you know imbibed a little and and smoked a little and did other things that we did because <laughs> the town was closed on mondays right and so no one bothered so there was a restaurant friend of ours own we could go into the restaurant and 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 do that um so uh, a couple of the people from the new hope school of art which is not a physics school it's a style of watercolor they joined um, then Leon Redbone joined, who um, many of you might have seen on Saturday Night Live and, and all these different other shows. Johnny Carson, I think he, he for a long time was the you know most guested musical artist on on Johnny, and, uh, and then uh, Bob Dylan and then Paul Simon all interacted with us on the Monday afternoon tea party, which then in turn became called. Um, Mastermind mindset is eventually it became called, but because um, the Monday afternoon tea party didn't sound <laughs> too, too, um, you know, business like or official, you know, <laughs> too powerful. <laughs> oh my God, what an amazing story! Yeah, what an amazing story. And then now it's Yes Mastermind. And well, the Yes Mastermind is only six years, six and a half, seven years old. Okay, okay, we have, um, depending on where I lived you know, different incarnations. And then people are only allowed to stay in the mastermind for two years. Okay. And then they must go to another level mastermind. I believe there's six levels to a mastermind. Right. And mine's an entry level per se. Uh, they learn the process. They learn, you know, the questions to ask. They, they, they you know, and, and get mastery. And then they move on to, a, to another level. I love the work you do. I love it. And I, I had the, the privilege of speaking to your mastermind, you know, and talking about the significance of having a vision for your life, um, personally and professionally. Wonderful people in that group that I got to meet some of them in person at Greg's Secret Knock, you know, beautiful, beautiful people there. And I'm so happy that Eric Swanson introduced me to you. And I belonged the last year and a half to his mastermind. And what, what you guys do for people is before I joined the mastermind, I was single mom, you know, newly divorced, working really hard to build my business. And it was hard and I was alone doing it. Most people don't understand the entrepreneur. You know, they're like, what is life coaching? What is it? What you? And I already, I've been coaching for years and, you know, but when I, when I was married and I didn't do it as like the business, you know, like a full on business, I just did it to make the world a better place. Long story short, when I joined Eric's mastermind through showing up constantly my growth happened rapidly and it wasn't just professional growth. It was the personal growth. Like life got to be fun again, you know, before that life was so hard, you know, and, and it got to be fun again. So the work that you do is extraordinary. It's, I grew my business in a year and a half to like insane in an insane way. And I'm looking to scale this year to a million, you know, when I started with nothing after the divorce and it's just amazing how fast you help people grow um, and, and what you do. So let's talk about leveraging your gifts. Yeah. You know, let, well, let's, uh, <laughs> before we go there, let me just comment on that team. People, most people, you know, get that, you know, if, if you desire to have it done perfectly, do it yourself type of attitude. No. Okay. And yeah. we know. Yeah. That life is a team sport. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you hire what you suck at. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Delegation you know, is cool. As a leader and uh, you know owning a company, you should understand how everything works. However, you don't master everything. No. You hire 
those that are already masters in those you know elements. And that's leads us to leveraging the individual to to increase to increase the potential for success, you must leverage the people in your life. What is really, really what creates a really easy way to sell whatever it is you're selling, whether you're selling yourself or you're selling a piece of art, whatever it is, is third party edification. And you, you know, when you think about the individuals that you had met, and they start to talk about Aaron and what Aaron does, and they start to introduce you to the individuals in their life who should know Aaron. That's leverage. Yeah. Third party edification. And and the growth that we have around the gifts that we have, as we said earlier, you know, if if you if you if you're not passing your gift forward, it's a sin in my in in my book, you know, going back to the nuns at uh, in, in uh, <laughs> <laughs> right to hell. You know, and so so there's there's things that you need to know or you have to answer. It's like, um, do you know who your ideal client is? Do you know their biggest issues or the struggles that they're in? Do you know the topics or key words that your your uh, ideal client searches online for? You know, and you go down that because we need to have and be precise passing forward what we do. Right. So that the the people that are gonna edify us can can say it precisely. Yeah. You know. My friend Patrick Carney, the artiste, he hangs out at the corner of Art and Soul in the Church of Rock and Roll and has been capturing portraits of rock and roll stars since 1964. You should know him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My friend Patrick Carney, the artiste, he's a people broker. A people broker? Oh, yes. What he does is he brings successful people together for the sole purpose of increasing their net worth. So two lanes, two different things, mastermind, artist. However, in 30 seconds, people can understand and have a desire to ask more questions because we, we, we must pass on so that they have a desire to know us. And, and the correlation with everything that you do is heart and soul. Yeah. You know, so, so you're, you're, everything is heart and soul. So, uh, Uh, I love what you're saying. I have so many questions and I want to respect your time. Um, Leveraging your gifts. I also believe we should be monetizing our God-given gifts. People feel like that's a sin. And the sin is not monetizing your God-given gifts. I believe we're here to live an abundant life, you know, and, um, you know, if you choose to work for somebody else, that's great. You know, if that's what you want to do, if if your God-given gift is, you know, uh, working in somewhere in a school or whatever it is, then that's a different story. But as long as you're utilizing and monetizing your God-given gifts, then you're making the best of life. What do you have to say about that? Well, I go back to our friend Les Brown. You know, Les, you know, informs us, tells us, trains us, coaches us that um, we give away the overflow. Yes. Okay. So we need to monetize. We need um, to systematically plan and prepare the process so that we are following what's called precession. And precession is the fact that our true purpose happens at 90 degrees. So if we're chasing money, we'll never get it. If we are enhancing and changing the world and making a difference and monetize that, yeah, the money will flow. And it'll have good energy attached to it. I always say, you know, I, 
with um, very wealthy people, there's plenty that say my life sucks, you know, my marriage is, is in shambles. And, and through speaking with them, I learned that they're cutting corners on people, you know, with their business, they're trying to get over, you know, so the exchange of money is not a, it doesn't have good energy tied to it. You're the person who's looking to serve other people. And then that exchange of, of energy with regard to money then that energy, that money that they receive has great energy tied to it. And they're living a fabulous life. You know, it's, it's interesting what you're saying. Yeah. A good point. You know, and, and I see it all the time. You know, you know yeah. we, as good, as good as I am at, you know, um, looking at an individual and saying, yes, you should be in my mastermind. I make mistakes mm -hmm. and I have no problem throwing them out. Right. And I discover that they're takers. Yeah. They have to be givers to be in my mastermind. And, um, you know, they have to have, you know, a target market that's, um, that's large enough to be worth their time, yet small enough and interrelated enough for their reputations to precede them because we can enhance that. We can work with that. If, if, you know, there's so many people that are chasing this huge abundance of people and they don't know who they are. Their reputation has a procedure. We need, we need to go in the steps and take the action steps where the reputation grows and precedes them by the time they get there. I love your work. I love you. And I want to hold up what you did for me because I just, I'm so proud of this. You drew me. I have. I was drawn by Patrick Carney, and I am so proud of that. And it's such a, an honor and a privilege to know you. You are a beautiful soul. You are such. Your your life work is extraordinary, and it's incredibly moving. And you know, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to call you friend. I really am. It's it's a blessing. So it, right back at you. It's you know, it's a privilege to know you, and I I thank. Uh, the universe that you are in my life. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is there anything on your head or your heart that we didn't discuss that you'd like to talk about? I want you to tell everybody how they can get in touch with you and where they can see your work. Well, you know, I, uh, as, as you know, I'm, I'm basically retired. Yes. And so they, you can get a hold of me um, by an email, which is pcar13 at gmail. Or you can find me on all the social media um, worlds. So I'm on Twitter and uh, you know, and uh, Instagram and Facebook. And um, however, I I uh, now draw for me. I now create for me, and I do the mastermind as my give back to the world, so that we have individuals. Um, that will change the world. And um, I'm also doing art classes for um, kids between the ages of nine and 14 so that they understand how to bring the object they desire to capture into their heart and soul before they start to draw so that they can actually draw that with their eyes closed. Wow. And you said to me at one point that um, you need to get the eyes right first. Oh, yeah. I start with with their right eye, left eye as I look at it. And if I don't get the eyes right, I start over. And I, I probably get, you know, a dozen, two dozen comments a day on just eyes. Mm. Eyes okay. are powerful. If I can't make eye contact with somebody, like, I can't have a conversation <laughs> You know, there's no depth. If I eye contact for me is so important. Um, yeah. And and see, I have a goal every day of impacting six lives by 6 p.m. Some brand new lives, people I have never, ever, ever met. And, and it must be eye contact. It must be, you know, interrelated. And, um, you know, just on my walks in the morning when I, you know, I walk in a, a lagoon, um, it's a one, one way is 3.7 and back is 3.7 miles. And, and um, it's always packed. And so 
eye contact on that. I, I attempt to see how many how much eye, eye contact I can have on the on the wall. I love that. I love it. And for my clients that I do coaching, the the coaching over the phone with, I feel their soul. You know, like I do, it's almost like a, a mind meld kind of a thing. So I'm not saying that I need eye contact, you know, uh, for every kind of communication. But if I am face to face with somebody and I can't maintain eye contact for whatever reason, I can't have a deep conversation. Yeah. Um, so well, I guess this morning I uh, there was a woman coming at me with uh, with red sneakers on red, red chucks. And uh, I said to her, wow, I understand only angels can wear red shoes. Made her day. Made her day. That's great. You know, that's a, it's all it takes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a compliment and something that I mean, I've never heard anything like that before in my life. Um, well, it goes back to an Elvis Costello song. But, you know, it's you know, I love lyrics. I'm all oh, about the go. lyrics. Yes, you yeah. are. Yes, you are. It was so wonderful speaking with you. And I want everybody to check out your work. You're all over social media at the P car 13. No, that's the email at the P Carney art on Instagram and Facebook. You're everywhere. And I just want them to see who you are, what you do, the amazing work that you have and to check out your mastermind and everything else that you have going on. You just, just an amazing man. So thank you so much for being thank here you. with us today. Thank you so much, Patrick Carney. What an amazing man. A incredible. So thank you everybody for taking the time to, to spend the time with us today. And you can reach me at erinlay.com. Let me know what your thoughts are with what's going on in your life and with regard to the show. And if there's any content that you want me to create and bring to you, you can let me know. And again, erinlay.com, you can re reach out to me there. So thank you again and have a magnificent day. And always remember to live onward and upward. Love you.